In this video, we will discuss about I-shaped girders. The girders with upper and lower section broadened and the middle section tapered so that it can withstand heavy loads over it. It is called as I shaped girders. Since the girder look like letter I as shown in figure, that's why they named as I shaped girders. In general, any girder supported at its two ends as on the opposite walls of a room bends under its own weight and a small depression is produced at the middle portion. Look at the image. Normal material has the ability of increasing its stamina by changing the shape like I-shaped girders. This may also be caused when the loads are applied to the beams. Due to the depression produced, the upper parts of the girder above the neutral axis contracts, while the lower parts below the neutral axis expands. Thus, the stresses have a maximum value at the top and bottom. The stresses progressively decrease as it approaches towards the neutral axis. Therefore, the upper and lower surfaces of the girder must be stronger than the intervenient part. Thus, the girders are made up of I shape and are called I shaped girders. Minimization of depression. We know the depression produced in the case of a rectangular cross section O is equal to WL cube divided by OEBD cube. Here the depression can be minimized by either decreasing the load or the length of the girder or by increasing the Young's modulus or breadth or the thickness of the girder. Since the length of the beam is fixed quantity, it cannot be decreased. Therefore, the breadth and the thickness may be adjusted by making the girder of uh, larger depth and smaller breadth. Since thickness increases by B cube. Thus, the volume of the girder is increased and hence the depression produced is reduced. Therefore, for stability, the upper part and the lower part is made broader than the center part and hence forming an I-shaped called I-shaped girders. The depression can also be reduced by properly choosing the material of high Young's modulus. Applications They are used in the construction of bridges over the rivers they are very much useful in the production of iron rails which are employed in railway tracks. They are used as supporting beams for the ceilings in the construction of buildings. Thank you.